This is a reading of the prologue of my book, Ease the Squeeze, subtitled 12 Tips to Put the Ball Back in Your Court While Being Kinder to Nature Too. You can download the book for free at www.perspectiveproject.co.za. You can support the work further by clicking around the site and looking at some of my online services. If the online service might be of value to you, you could book a session and we can meet online. If you think the service could be of value to a friend or a colleague, please send them a link. Without further ado, here is the prologue to Ease the Squeeze. Prologue. Relative Autonomy and Sustainability. Let's face it, the times they are changing and quickly too. I am writing this prologue in April 2022, the day before another fuel price hike, which always translates into the price hikes of just about everything that we must purchase to survive. Most people are scratching their heads about this phenomenon, understandably asking themselves how they are going to be able to afford transport, electricity, food, water, rent or mortgage payments and other expenses. Without a doubt, the squeeze of superinflation is tightening and it looks like things are only going to get worse considering the economic damage done by lockdowns, warmongering and a fundamentally flawed fiat currency. A decade ago, I was already feeling the economic squeeze, though it was not nearly as tight as it is now. It was 2012 and I was working as a lecturer in England. It was my fourth year in that role And while I enjoyed the actual in-class part of the job, I found myself working six and a half days a week, 12 hours a day during most days, just to be able to deliver on the basic job requirements. In exchange, I received a measly wage that allowed me to pay the rent on a dark and moldy ground floor apartment in the cheapest suburb in the town, as well as for the usual array of mandatory bills that even back then seemed to be unreasonably pricey. It did not seem like a fair exchange. The squeeze I was feeling was not only an economic one. Years earlier, I had become aware of what can broadly be called the ecological crisis. And it did not take long to learn that we human beings are causing a mass extinction event. I started to feel an ecological squeeze on top of the economic one. And while I worked those 12-hour days, six and a half days a week, I daydreamed about something else. My research turned to alternative ways of living and... Long story short, my partner and I embarked on a permaculture design certificate course. We resigned from our respective jobs, moved to South Africa, and erected two small tents on friends' land to start our experiment in living. That was back in 2012. I write in detail about that adventure, as well as the lead up to it, in my first book, Permaculture Made Me Do It. So it is perhaps something of a spoiler to point out that a decade after taking that plunge, my partner and I did ease the economic and ecological squeezes we were feeling in the UK. We did this by going back to basics, and we went back to basics by doing all of the things that I write about in this book. I like to think about these things as rustic, low-tech solutions, or as cheap and cheerful life hacks. But these descriptions, so I am told, lack a certain charm. So I have chosen to frame what we did as applying tips that eased the squeezes so far described. I believe that by putting the tips in this book into action, a person will be able to achieve a type of personal freedom in their own life, while simultaneously achieving the outcome of treading slightly more softly in nature. That personal freedom could be described as relative autonomy, with autonomy here meaning self-direction. Not complete autonomy, to be sure, but more autonomy than a life in which the tips are not applied. By treading slightly more softly in nature, one also practices a way of living that is more affordable and sustainable than if the tips were not applied. Aiming for sustainability in and of itself is an unachievable goal. But aiming to do something that is more sustainable in comparison to doing something else is completely workable. It allows us to set achievable goals. This book is written in the spirit of setting and achieving goals that, when compared to the outcomes of going about business as usual, make for a slightly more sustainable dispensation. This dispensation may be thought about from three different angles. First, the personal domain of one's life. Second, the bigger domain we call society. And third, the domain of nature. In the personal domain of my own life, 
aiming to ease the squeeze and achieve relative sustainability goals, put me on an unexpected educational journey. I had to learn practical skills, develop a different set of attitudes, and become comfortable with different ways of doing and being in the world, all of which made me a more well-rounded person. Achieving the goals to the extent that my partner and I have has left us far less reliant on the proverbial man. We don't have, for example, any water or electricity bills to pay. We live quite cheerfully and cheaply and we're better off for doing so. The bigger domain of society, when viewed as a conglomeration of communities, is something that may benefit from broader application of the tips. The little bubble of relative sustainability that my partner and I managed to create has not yet had an impact at the community level. I believe that more individuals working to apply some or all of the tips will result in more people being happier, paying less for bills, using fewer resources, being less addicted to distractions like Netflix, and having more of an inclination to work on reviving local communities. By writing this book, I hope to inspire others to apply the tips and thus have an impact at a bigger scale. In the domain of nature, by working towards achieving some goals of relative sustainability, my partner and I have developed a lifestyle that uses fewer resources than we used in previous phases of our lives. A smaller footprint means less destruction of nature. While our savings of resources may add up to only a drop in the ocean of overall global resource use, I believe that every drop counts. At our tiny homestead, we have seen an increase in bird and insect life, perhaps because we have gone quite far in applying various ecological principles. The tips have been important for that process. It would be speculating to try and imagine what is ahead for the human race. So it is with sober caution that I refer to the theme of civilization collapse. The end will come at some point, just like it has for all previous civilizations, but who knows when. In whatever ways the process plays out, it will be helpful to have a network of ecocentric hubs constituted by individuals and groups of people who have applied the tips and perhaps thereafter work to go even further towards relative sustainability. By applying these tips, one will be taking some steps towards much needed resilience. I have ordered the tips in an incremental manner. In other words, you should be able to apply the first tip on the same day that you read and think about it. Maybe you will be able to tackle some of the other tips immediately too. For most people, tip 12 will be much harder and likely less appealing to try and implement than, for example, tip 5. Applying some of the tips may require nothing of you but to be in a place where you look at things and think about things differently. Other tips may require that you learn some skills that you might not presently have. You might wish to apply some of the tips and ignore others and add a few of your own into the mix that works for you. The ones I've chosen are the ones that I have tried and tested, and I can vouch for their efficacy. They will empower you in ways that you might not be able to foresee, perhaps because they require you to become more hands-on in the ways that you sustain yourself and your family. The idea is for you to become more hands-on in ways that ease the economic squeeze you are likely feeling, while easing the ecological squeeze on this beautiful planet. This might enable the meeting of two arenas of need with one category of deed. How refreshing in a time of such ubiquitous problems. Thanks for listening to the prologue of my book, Ease the Squeeze. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If you like, you can download the book for free at www.perspectiveproject.co.za. Or if you like, you can pay for the book. There is an option to do so at the site and you can even select the amount. You can support the work further by scrolling around the site, clicking around and seeing if any of the online services might be of value to you and if they are, you can book a service. You could also send a link to a friend with information about a service that might be of value to the friend or to the person you know and they can also book a session. Ciao for now.